French irregular verbs. What they are and why they exist just to annoy us when we're trying to learn their language is not the concern of this video. In this session of lockdown learning, we are going to learn how to commit them to memory and to spot any patterns that will help us when we actually need to use them for GCSE and A-level French. Hello and welcome to another session of Lockdown Learning uh, with me, Paul Holland. Today we're concentrating on French irregular verbs. Um, there's plenty of them in French, but lots of them do follow a particular pattern or they show signs of following the kind of patterns that you've already encountered when you've looked at the classic three groups of regular verbs. So what we'll look at today is we'll look at the, the most common that you'll encounter at GCSE and into A-level French. Um, and I've decided to take it as a slightly different approach. Rather than looking at the uh, most irregular first and, and or sort of dropping you in the deep end, we're going to move away from the regular paradigms verb by verb just spotting how many of them show similarities with the patterns that you already know. And by the end of this video, we'll encounter the big three or four, which just don't seem to follow uh, uh, many regular patterns at all. So our starting point for looking at French irregular verbs is actually this very familiar uh, table that I'm sure you all recognize of the regular verbs, the three patterns, the ER, RE and IR verbs, I've put them in different colors so that when you do see some patterns that emerge um, from these particular groups, uh, you'll be able to recognize which of the three groups they fit in. And then from this point onwards, we're just going to go through the irregular verbs. I've got 15 of them for you, uh, 15 very useful, very familiar, hopefully, um, and, and very common verbs that you will need to know. So. Without further ado, here's the first one. Um, this is to open, ouvrir. Now, the way that I've set each of these verbs out is like this. Um, on the left is going to be the present tense. Uh, the present tense is where there are uh, the most irregularities, the most uh, divergences from the patterns that you've just had on the screen. Uh, but on the right as well, you'll notice that I've put the past participle in, which is often very... Uh, irregular or sometimes just a little bit awkward. I've also put the future stem in and the future stem uh, in this case is very straightforward. It's the infinitive on which you put those endings that you probably already know. A, I, A, S, A, O, N, S, E, Z and O, N, T. So that's the future stem. It can sometimes cause problems as you'll see. So here's the first one then for open. Uh, you can see the present tense follows that E, E, S, E pattern from uh, the E, R verb. So j'ouvre, tu ouvres, il ouvre, nous ouvrons, vous ouvrez, and ils ouvrent. The next verb is prendre, and prendre in the present tense, as you can see, looks a little bit like an RE verb. That's what it starts out as, isn't it? Prendre, that's the infinitive with RE on the end. Um, but then it drops the D, as you can see, and it drops the D right the way through to the end after that, uh, and it doubles the N. And the past participle is odd. It goes to pri. But once you've got prendre, you can also learn two other really useful verbs. Here's the first one, apprendre which means to learn and to teach in French. Uh, so they use the same verb and it follows exactly the same pattern as you've just seen with prendre. So if you can do prendre and apprendre, here's a really, really useful verb for you. Uh, this is comprendre, to understand. Je comprends, tu comprends, il comprend, nous comprenons. Vous comprenez and ils comprennent. Notice the pronunciation at the end. And of course, the past participle. Have you understood? Vous avez compris? Have you understood? Past tense. Mettre is another RE verb, which then goes a bit strange. Uh, so there's the S, S and nothing. So that follows that pattern. Um, but you'll notice the irregularity here is the past participle which is a little bit like prendre goes to pris, mettre goes to me. I have put something somewhere. I have placed 
something somewhere. Devoir means must or ought to or has to. Somebody has to do something. Uh, devoir is um, one of those verbs that you'll increasingly see from now on which have a slightly different form in the nous and the vous form. So it starts with je dois, tu dois, il doit, with the SST pattern. And then nous devons, vous devez. And then back again to OI, ils doivent, but it keeps that V. And we'll see that quite a few times from now on. Notice the past participle has a little circumflex over the U as well. Du, I had to do something. J'ai dû faire quelque chose. Vouloir, really useful verb. Again, this does something quite odd in the nous and the vous form. So je veux, tu veux, il veut. XXT, very common pattern. But nous voulons, vous voulez, and then back again to ils veulent, with an L in there as well. And another one from this group, pouvoir, to be able to do something, can do something. Je peux, tu peux, il peut. Nous pouvons, vous pouvez, and ils peuvent. Notice also the future stem here is with a double R. There are two words in French for knowing something. Here's the first one, savoir. Savoir does this, je sais, tu sais, il sait. Then it goes to nous savons, vous savez. Once again, the nous and the vous form, copy the infinitive. And also, so does the ils. So it carries on in this pattern for this particular one too. Ils savent. Notice the past participle is also um, interesting. And so too is the future stem quite different. That V disappears and becomes a U. Now, savoir means to know a fact, to know something. Um, the next verb, connaître, means to know somebody or to know a place, to be familiar with something, that kind of knowing, okay? Um, I, I know that man would be this one here, je connais. So, je connais, tu connais, il connaît, nous connaissons, vous connaissez, and il connaisse. Reminds us a little bit of the IR verbs, doesn't it? Just a little bit. This verb means to drink, boire, uh, je bois, tu bois, il boit, and then the U appears out of nowhere, this has not appeared before, nous buvons, vous buvez, and then it goes back to boire with OI again, but the V stays as well. So we've come into verbs now which have really started to diverge from those patterns that we saw in the regular verbs at the beginning. Here's another one to say or to tell, dire, je dis, tu dis, il dit, nous disons, vous dites, and ils disent. Now interestingly we've got vous dites here without an ez. This is one of only three verbs in the whole of the French language which does not use ez at the end of the vous form. So it's just a silent es, vous dites. Um, you might not think that's very useful, but you will hear it when people instruct you to tell me something and you're talking to somebody uh, perhaps that you don't know very well formally or perhaps a group of people. Dites-moi. Dites, dites-moi is what you'd hear, not dise with an EZ. Okay, here comes the next one, faire. Again, faire, we're becoming very, very irregular now. Je fais, tu fais, il fait. SST is quite familiar. Nous faisons, vous faites. And then, ils font, with an O-N-T at the end. Notice the future stem has an E instead of anything to do with an A now. It's je ferai, pronounced like that. Je ferai, tu feras, il fera. The verb to go. Very familiar, very common. Uh, aller. Uh, I've taught pupils who, who treat it as a normal E-R verb. Uh, and I hear them say, j'al, tu al, il al, nous allons, but I'm afraid it's nothing like that at all. Here it comes with a V, je vais, tu vas, il va, 
nous allons, vous allez, ils vont. The past participle is fairly regular, but you have to remember that it takes être. Uh, and if you're not sure what that means, watch my video on être verbs in the past tense. The future stem comes straight from the Latin. It's just an IR, so it's very, very unexpected. Um, if you were expecting it to be j'allerai, it's j'irai, tu iras, il ira, etc. And down to the final two, I'm sure you've guessed who they are. Uh, in second place, avoir, j'ai, tu as, il a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont. Notice the past participle is pronounced u, I have had, j'ai eu. Although a lot of times in French you'd use the imperfect tense, j'avais, which is spelled a v a i s, j'avais. But it, it, it might come up j'ai eu. And the future stem is a little bit awkward as well. It's got a u there, a u r. And in top position of awkwardness, we have, of course, our old friend être. Here it comes. Je suis, tu es, il est, nous sommes, vous êtes. Another es at the end. And ils sont. Past participles été. But it takes avoir. J'ai été. I have been. Again, you'd probably more likely in French to use j'étais, which is the imperfect tense, most likely. And the future stem, je serai, tu seras, il sera, very odd. Good, there we are. That's French irregular verbs uh, laid out for you, hopefully in a way that will make them memorable. As ever with the language, spotting patterns, spotting where the patterns are followed, spotting where the, they diverge from the patterns is a good way to just help you to commit them to memory. The other thing about learning a language, obviously, is that the more you use those words, especially when you're speaking them, the more natural they begin to sound in your mind, in your memory, uh, with the result that you never hear yourself say, jal, it sounds much more natural to say, je vais. Um, uh, there are just ways in which the practice of a language cements it in your mind and, and fixes what is actually the, the true form uh, until it, it just sounds wrong if you don't say it like that. Good luck with your French, good luck with your uh, French irregular verbs, and if you found that useful, uh, please subscribe, thank you, and um, look forward to seeing you in another session of Lockdown Learning. Thank you, goodbye. <laughs>